This is Jose Molina, and he's going to talk about more problems with home automation stuff. Let's give him a big party track welcome. Uh, 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 perfect. Hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to have so many people here. It's great. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun, which? It's going to be a fun talk. So it's good that you are here. You can drink. You can have fun. It's the party track. All right. So I'm going to start with a question for you, and it's the following. If I were you to tell you that someone can control every appliance in your room, except the locks and maybe the thermostat, but everything else, like the TV, the lights, the blinds, everything else. Will you stay at that room or will you check out tonight? Not the locks. They cannot do you any physical harm and they cannot steal your shit. But everything else is controlled by someone. Okay? So think about it. I will come back to this talk, to this question later. Okay? So who am I? I am a security consultant based in San Francisco. This part of the talk is brought by, to you by my mom. I wanted uh, the second last name to be said. <laughs> so my name is Dr. Jesus Maria Molina Terriza. So I'm a Spanish guy. I'm from La Mancha, where the mil windmills are and all that stuff. My website is jesusmaria.com. My Twitter handle is at verified and trust. And get me tequila. And I will give you more videos, which are more, more fun, <laughs> these ones. All these videos I saw have plausible deniability, meaning that I can say that somebody else did it with the iPad. <laughs> but, so, all right, so what did I do? You know, this is kind of the romantic side of security, uh, where somebody goes to a place, you know, sees something is broken and like tries to hack onto it or something. This kind of this thought. I have 48 hours to do this because I was checking out. And in the process, I was able to control 200 plus rooms at a five star hotel. Uh, by abusing uh, an insecure home automation protocol. So I was able to raise the blinds, the TVs, switch on everything in 200 plus rooms. While I was a guest in the hotel in China. Okay, so uh, give me credit for this, you know, because it was kind of scary. <laughs> okay, so. And I did not hack anything, I abused something, okay? <laughs> so that's also different things. And the good thing is this is like a story with a happy ending, right? Because uh, I talked with the Starwood uh, and they were okay with this talk. Actually, they supported it. They say, go ahead and do it. Uh, I talked with the CIO. By the way, that was the most awkward talk in the world. <laughs> it was like my lawyer was in the phone with me. His lawyer was in the phone with him. <laughs> we're like, hi, how are you doing? We know you did something in our hotel. <laughs> Explain a little bit what it was. <laughs> but... <laughs> But the fact is that they disabled the system right away and they have changed the policy uh, on all the hotels, which are the Seratons and, and uh, the St. Regis, because of this. So they did uh, you know, the correct steps you know, and they, they have been like, very, uh, very good at that. Well, let's go to the talk. Um, so the hotel is the St. Regis Shenzhen. The St. Regis, the Shenzhen, Shenzhen is the Silicon Valley of China, so it's this uh, city. The hotel is up there in the 20 top stories of, uh, of a skyscraper, beautiful place. Um, so this is kind of like uh, uh, Die Hard 3 take over Die Hard 1, <laughs> you know, like so it was the hacker was uh, But the, the feature of the hotel, except, you know, that, uh, that really caught my attention was an iPad. This iPad is able to control, appears in every room, and is able to control every feature of the room. So the iPad comes in every room, and with the iPad you can raise the blinds, switch on the lights, and, uh, you know, put the music on, switch on the channels of the TV, all that stuff, right? So I was there in the, in the room, and it's like, okay, so can I control the room with my laptop rather than with my iPad? So the first thing I did is I, I said, like, well, what is communicating between the iPad and the, the things in the room? So the iPad is open to inspection and tampering, so I just, like, uh, you know, browse the iPad, you know, and check where was the iPad connected to, and the iPad was connected to the guest network of the hotel. If you've been in a hotel, you know the guest network uh, is open. You can between, you have to pay for the internet, but you can be neighborly with all the other people connected to. So the guest network is open to inspection and tampering. So the automation protocol these guys used from the iPad to every fixture in the room needs to be secure. Well, it was not. <laughs> so hence the talk here. <laughs> all right, so I checked what was connecting, what was sending uh, the iPad to every device and I found out it was uh, UDP telegrams to a single port. So I went ahead and checked in the internet <laughs> what was this port about. And it turns out that there was uh, KNX. Who in this room knows what KNX is? No one. 
No one's going to exist. All right, so KNX is a super uh, extended protocol for home automation in Europe and China and Asia in general. This is really, really um, extended there because it's a, it's a, it's a standard. Uh, in China, KNX is the only home automation standard. So if you want to be the, make a building or an airport, you have to deploy KNX. So this is kind of serious. Uh, it was created in the 1990s, and uh, it's very simple to deploy. You can see there, this is an actuator. So basically, it, it, um, you plug all the devices to the actuator. And there is another wired, so this is a wired protocol, another wire that you can send uh, messages to switch on the lights, raise the blinds, and everything, right? So it's an open standard, and when open means closed. <laughs> and that's another interesting fact here, right? Uh, the first time I saw this, I was like, okay, so I will go to the internet and download the standards and see what happens. But you have to pay a thousand euros to download the standard. And that's an open standard, okay? <laughs> So, uh, but the KNX uh, people uh, decided to give the standard to universities, so universities created open source clients. And that's how I was able to understand the standard, uh, by taking all these clients, looking at the code, and then I could make out what was going on there. And another fun fact is that there is absolutely no security. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, this protocol was created in the 1990s where um, there were physical security around all these wires, so they didn't need to put any, any, any security. However, they decided to create a, a evolution of the protocol called KNX IP, which is um, you know, enveloping the KNX uh, messages with IP frames. But they didn't put any security either there. And that's known since 2006, right? So 2006, there was a document saying, hey, there is no security, and these people made say there was no security. But nobody did anything except uh, six months ago, uh, the KNX people sent a new protocol uh, evolution, uh, a new version of the protocol that does has, uh, that, that has, has some security on it, or that they say, but I cannot download it, so I don't really know. Well, if you have a thousand euros, <laughs> I can like, check it out. But. All right, so how this works, okay? So how, how this uh, you know, work in the hotel? So every room had a single IP. That's the IP that I saw that they were communicating to. And that's a KNX IP router. This KNX IP router, what it does, it converts um, this uh, IP information into KNX information. KNX, it's a wire protocol, so all this goes after that uh, through wires. And as you see, the, the wire protocol, KNX, have different way of forming the addresses. There are like three numbers. The first number there, you see like uh, three numbers with the slashes. The first number is the area line. The second number is the uh, area, area, area number. And the second number is the line number. And the third number is the device number, okay? So as you see there, like a light will have like two, 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 and a TV will have two, two, three. So it's kind of easy to guess, right? All right, next thing, like the rest of the hotel. So the rest of the hotel, you know, if I want to connect to another room, you see the difference there. Like, uh, there was another IP address. That room is 777, the next room is 7778. If you see the IP address, is correlative or so. And then if you look at the device numbers for each device, you know, there's like 222. In the room 7778, there was like 232. Okay? So, it was a little bit more difficult than that, you know, there's different floors, some of them have KNX or not, but I, I, I went to three rooms, you know, and I basically was able to tell what was the next number uh, for each room. So I was like, I have a map for each IP address and room. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's maybe for me. All right. So the protocol, so now I know that, uh, you know, I know that, that every room has an IP address, that every device in every room has an address too, right? So the only thing I need to do now is to code the protocol. And the protocol goes like this, you know? I send a connect request to the IP address. It goes, says like, hey, yes, okay. And they give me like a window of, of, uh, that I have to use after that. I do a connection request, and it sends back a connection response saying, hey, yeah, that's, that's good, you know? Like uh, you're connected to, to the KNX network. After this, I say a tunnel request. And after this moment, I can send anything I want to the KNX network, meaning that I can send anything to switch on the lights and switch off the lights, open the blinds, close the blinds. This packet I sent internally is called the KEMI, and it's like what uh, goes into the KNX network. At the end, I disconnect, uh, I send a disconnect request, and then it says a disconnect response. So that's it. If I have the protocol to connect to the KNX network, I have the IP address for every room, 
and I have the address, KNX address, for every device, what can I do with it? Well, I can raise every blind of the hotel at will. So let's look at a little bit about what I'm sending in the wire to the Kemi, to the Kemi thing that I was talking about. So you see, um, it's really simple. It's like a UDP header, um, you know, enveloping a Kemi frame. So all these numbers didn't make any sense to you. They didn't make any sense to me in the 40 hours I was in the room. <laughs> but after researching a little bit, I was able to understand this is like part of the code of one of the open source clients I told you. This is not from the standard. This is like something I said there. And I saw this, that there's a lot of things there, but the only important things you have to see there is there's an address and an action. The address is the address of the device I want to switch on. The action is depending on the device, and that's typified in the only open document that KNX has, which is how do you use, what actions you do for each device. For example, a light bulb to switch on and off is 80 and 81. To raise the thermostat, which also is controlled by the room, there is like different stuff that you have to send, but it's still, you know, it's typified, you know, so you just like code it and that's it. All right, so the question is, can I switch, and that was kind of the quest here, can I switch a TV on every room. If you have been following the talk, and I hope you had, you know, you have understood that if I can switch one light bulb, I can switch every device because I don't need, I don't need the device, the device uh, numbers. I need the device numbers for, for my room. And if I can uh, switch on the TV or switch on the blinds in my room, if I know the IP address of every room, then I can switch every TV on every room, okay? So if I said you can switch one light bulb means I can switch every TV. So I will tell you exactly that. <laughs> uh, by the way, I was super caffeinated, so sorry about the, about the looks. All right, so that's me. You look at the left, right, right there. See what's going on there? That's the first time I tried to do this. <laughs> 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 so that's, that's happiness of uh, not being caught. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I, I was recording this for the, for the posterity, <laughs> so I wanted to, to record this. All right, so you see the light bulb right there. I used to like the smallest light bulb because it was the, also the brightest, so it was easy. I have other videos with me, like raising the blinds, switching on the TVs, but I think this is the most, uh, the fastest to show. I'll say it's just my... So see, the light goes on and the light goes off, and I use in my laptop um, to do this. I just see like I, that was like after a whole night of working on this, you know. I was, you know, I had to code my own protocol and stuff, you know. Okay, let's go back. Oh, all right. So we are in the, the like I need um, uh, a program to send tunneling requests, which you can use EIBD, which is a daemon. It's open source. It's, you can download it right now, and you can start sending um, KNX frames in the wire. So it's very fast. The problem with them that the, the daemon it was not you cannot parallelize. Um, it works because it connects with a single IP address. And I said I wanted to have the power to raise every TV, so I had to code my own in Python. It was really simple. It's a, it's, it's a very simple protocol. It's like a free free protocol. You need the KNX address of each device in the room. So what I did is I pressed the iPad, plop, 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 and it's automated the collection, and it will give me every address and every action of every device in the room. So I have this library of all these things. After this, I needed the IP address of, uh, of each room and the KNX, the area, and the line. That required a little bit more complexity. So what I did is I changed rooms all the time. I would go, uh, call downstairs, hey, I don't like this room. Come, you put me in another room. <laughs> and I will be, okay. <laughs> Two hours later, hey, I don't like this room. It's too much, <laughs> too much light coming on. <laughs> Can I change rooms? And they were like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, first, like, I cannot sleep in this room. <laughs> totally cannot. So at the end, they give me this room, <laughs> which is the suite. <laughs> And it's a beautiful duplex suite, you know, has these like beautiful fur to ceiling windows, but there is a problem with the suite that because of what is done, <laughs> there is no iPad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I will continue. Are there, are there any new speakers here? Raise your yeah. hand. Here. Hey, we got one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. 
So, so what do you think of foam hinge? <laughs> right there, that foam hinge. Right, right there, right, right there. Oh, foam hinge. Yeah, foam hinge. <laughs> we ordered a full-size foam stone hinge for you. Yeah, I know, I know, he told me. Okay, he good. told me, it's great, okay. I love it. All right. All right, cheers. 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 You don't get anything. Hey, come on. Hey, thanks. That was good, thank you very much. Do you have another one? <laughs> good luck continuing. All right, that was not tequila, by the way. <laughs> it was just some sort of very strong stuff. Anyway, so, so the problem with the suite was there was no iPad, so I could not continue my research there. <laughs> so I had to call back and say, hey, I really don't like this room, <laughs> you know? I, I don't like duplexes, <laughs> it's not my thing, <laughs> you know? It's just, they had to go upstairs to, to sleep. So they changed my room again, but the, the, the hotel manager came and I was like, hey, what's your problem? <laughs> so, okay. And then I got this, uh, you know, again, I was in a hotel in China, so I started a little bit uh, afraid of, uh, maybe they are seeing what I'm doing or something. Anyway, you're asking this question. It's like, well, Jesus, you told us that you can control every room, but how do you make sure you can control every room? So I created this heartbeat program um, where uh, outside each room there was the do not disturb light. You see this like blue and red? So the dollar sister light sits outside the room. So I can go outside and see room 777, and I can see the heart beating, room 778, and I will be heart beating. And if I have time, I will send you a video of that. But uh, anyway, so that way I can tell, whenever I press that button, I knew I had hacked that room. I could switch on the TV on that room. I can do anything in that room. So I, I did that for a couple of rooms. All right. Were there other devices connected? Maybe, but the problem is I tried sending random requests uh, to random addresses which were not used, and at some point somebody knocked at my door and I got super scared. I was like, oh my God, they caught me. I'm ready to go to the Chinese jail. <laughs> Take me with you. I did my best. But it was the laundry lady. <laughs> I said like, laundry, laundry? And then she went to the other room and the other room. So I guess I did something there. <laughs> but this has not been confirmed by the hotel, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think I probably did something. So what does it mean? By the way, I know the rainbow guy for the stoner people here. <laughs> That's a, it lives next to me. Anyway, so for hotels, they, did, they need to update their security policies. They don't include things as home automation or smart TVs and things like this that we can take over because hotels search in time all these devices. Is this policy in their hotels? The answer is yes, but I don't tell which ones until you know, I don't talk with them directly. For the Internet of Things, um, we are uh, you know, playing a guerrilla war. Everybody deploys their own protocols, their own things. You know? Nobody knows what they are deploying. And we have to give extra care when deploying automation uh, protocols in certain spaces because they all think that you have some kind of cocoon around them, like a Wi-Fi key or something. What's the worst that could happen? Well, when they first asked me this question, I was like, well, I would have created one iPad, you know, which controls every room of the hotel and the guy in the room doesn't know. So I switch on the TV and suddenly every TV in the hotel switch on. <laughs> or I can go with a ma magneto helmet, you know, and say like, oh, humans died, you know, and like, or put my arms up and like, every blind will switch on, you know, like all the TVs will start to flicker and chaos will ensue. And that seems to be the worst thing that could happen. That's what I told all the reporters. Yeah, I can go there and create chaos for activism or whatever reason. But I don't think that's the worst thing that could happen now. I think the worst thing that could happen, and the question I asked before, is because of this. You, I asked you, if I can control your room, will you stay in that room tonight? And I don't know what your answer will have been. And probably the answer is like, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? You know, that you switch on my TV? What they will say, what they will say if it was, Obama that asks you, hey, can I control your TV? If I go with the important news to you, do you want me to control your TV? You just said to me that it's okay for you to stay at your hotel even if you know I can switch on your TV. Would you say no to a president saying, I will only switch your TV on if it's important news I need to tell you? You're going to say yes because it's the same thing. You know, you are just like, give me power on, over your TV, just implicitly, you're going to say no to something, somebody that has a reason to do this, not me, like switching on your TV for sports? And people don't care, and that's the worst thing that could happen. I talk with so many reporters, so many people about it, and always ask me the question. I don't care. 
you switch on my light bulb, I don't care. Switch on my TV, it's okay. You know, like, those are, you're not making any harm to me, you are not stealing any shit from me. So, go ahead, it's not a problem. This is not a big security problem. Well, I digress. I digress, it's not a big security problem because I cannot do harm to you. But, you know, at the end is your peace of mind which I'm playing with, so be careful. Right, thank you very much. And, uh, yes, family here. Bye.